Hello, traders. Gary Wagner here. Approximately 11.15 in Honolulu. 4.15 in New York City. It is Friday, finally, the 17th day of August, 2012. And this is uh, the Daily Report for Gold and Silver, our weekend review. As we get close to the close today, we have gold and silver both off their highs with gold trading nominally higher on the day and silver trading off off about 13 cents. You know, traders, they say it's quietest before the storm. And I don't know if a storm is coming, but I do know it's been quiet. As you can see, current print on the board, 161520. The low has been 1610 and the high 1622. Silver flirting with $28 per ounce is actually showing negative prints on the day. As you can see, the most current contract, this is a continuous contract of Comex Silver, $27.99. And it's had a low of $27.94 and a high of $28.46. Let's start today's weekend review off by looking at a weekly chart, Henkin format, Elliott Wave Count along with Fibonacci. And apparently we've got this pennant formation, or I like to call it a compression triangle. And there can be no doubt we're getting closer and closer to the apex. The other thing that I'm noticing, if we want to stick with our count as one, two, this being three, we are slowly, ever so slowly, kind of meandering up to the upper resistance. This would be four. For a full count, we'll get a fifth. And then, of course, we'll get our thrust. And our thrust, of course, will be characterized primarily by the fact that it breaks above the resistance area right in here. Now, one thing that we can see when we look at this market that's absolutely apparent is, first, 1627. That is a 38% retracement area. You can see this 38% retracement comes from our shorter of the two retracement sequences that I've put on. So we're drawing it from about 11.48, 11.50 to the record top. And there's no doubt that there's real resistance there. And what I find interesting is when we take it to the what I'll call the longer of the two sequences, again, we're looking at 38%. But this time, the 38%, rather than really illustrating support or resistance, excuse me, is showing us support. That to me is saying something. We are trading definitely, definitely within this defined range. And what is most interesting to me is no matter what we do and no matter what we see, as we watch this market trade, it consistently, consistently stalls at this resistance point of about, call it 1621, right in here. You can see we get the tops here, tops right in here in terms of the bodies. And the highs are just either coming a little bit over that price point or look at this, just to this price point. Now, let's add one more indicator to the mix because I think it's genuinely giving us some important information. And that, of course, is the MACD, Moving Average Convergence Divergence. We've talked about through the week that they were really getting set to cross. This is, of course, the weekly chart. And as you can see, we've absolutely at this point, we have crossed. We're not really moving apart, diverging. And that's what you kind of want to see on the MACD. But there's no doubt they have crossed and they're indicating not only is the market extremely oversold, but that we might be witnessing a key reversal in this area. We are looking at a weekly chart. This is in straight candlestick format. I did a, another show, chart this with Gary Wagner for Kitco News and Kitco Media Productions this morning. Should come out later today. One of the things that we talked about was when you combine Elliott Wave and Henkin Candles and Fibonacci and trend analysis, the one thing you don't ever want to forget is to really add candlesticks to it because what that will offer us is yet a, another filter in which we look for confluence. And what do I mean by that? 
if we have various factors that through different technical approaches give us the same conclusion, it increases the probability of success. And what I found was interesting, and we've talked about this before, and that is as this market ran through its peaks and valleys, you, one could really identify many patterns quite easily, such as a shooting star here, an engulfing bullish, a three river evening star, engulfing bullish and a hammer. Then on this triple top, you had a series of dark cloud covers and engulfing bearishes, three river morning star to an engulfing bearish, and this we're calling an on neck pattern. It's really an incomplete piercing line, and then a dark cover, excuse me, dark cloud cover up here. It's significant in that it's a, another piece of the puzzle or another vantage point to view the puzzle so that we can better adjust our trading modality. Now, what are we seeing now in terms of candlestick patterns? Well, the interesting thing is that with the market the way that it is, we have really, and this is a weekly chart, we have been so caught in this very, very tight range that really what the candlesticks are showing us are very similar to the Henkin candles, and that is the best way to characterize it. Look at the alternating candle color. Up week, down week, up, down, up, down. Literally, you almost have them going back and forth on a weekly basis. Small bodied candles right in here tells you the market's consolidating. There can be no doubt. We're forming a base. And where are we forming the base? Well, just at around the $1,600 mark. It was $1,520. It then moved to $1,560, $1,580. And now we've got a real strong base building at about $1,600. What does that mean? Well, what that tells us is we are getting a series, and especially lately, we're getting a series of higher lows. You can see that right in here. And we are maintaining our lower highs. Secondly, we're getting very close to this apex. And I truly believe that once we hit the apex, we will have a significant breakout. I do believe because of the way this pattern is in terms of where it's falling within the Elliott wave count itself, meaning this is a fourth wave correction, we're going into a major fifth. My money, my belief is, is that we're gonna see a sizable breakout and that sizable breakout is going to be to the upside, not the downside. A Couple of markets to take a quick look at because I think that they're showing us some interesting, interesting indicators within the chart patterns themselves. This of course is the Standard & Poor's 500. We are definitely seen this market really rally and rally strong when you consider that since about April and May, call it around May, when we hit the significant bottom at about, uh, what, uh, 1260, 1270, right in there, the market's just been up, up, and away. But here's what I'm finding interesting. When we look at this record top that we have right in here, not an all-time high, but a, a record high for the year at least, as this market came down, there is no doubt that we found good support in this area and we are going back to what I believe is gonna be a pretty critical area. Will it be able to have the energy to break above this top here or will we see the market move back down finding resistance? Something we're gonna to wanna to look at next week. We are looking at a, a daily chart, Hankin format. This is the dollar index. And of course, most notably on this chart, after the sizable break to the upside, 84 absolute resistance right in here, we can see that it really began to trade along this channel. My sense is, is that we've got a little bit more to go down to the downside to, to really hit this line right in here. And then we'll probably see the market continue to trade within that channel. Lastly, let's take a look at the silver market. We talked about this, my daily viewers know this over the last couple of days. Here's what we're looking at. The fact of the matter is, we've got a very, very tight, tight trading range within silver. In terms of actual resistance, you can see it right here, 2840, and it's attempted on one, two, three occasions 
to trade to and over that point, that price point, and has been unsuccessful each time. In this most recent dip and rally, you can see that we hit that line once again. We went right to resistance and 420 minute Hankin charts. As you can see, we have gone red. I talked about the fact that I believe that we had some pretty strong resistance in this area. It's gonna take a little bit for it to overcome that. My personal sentiment right now is that silver will probably be unable to take this price point out and will once again track within this channel. And the channel itself in terms of the major support, 2680 up to about 27, just below there, as you can see, these lows right in here, the bodies right in here. Secondary, in terms of support, you've got 2740 and 2750 right in this area. But my sense is what we have genuinely seen is the market trade from pretty much the top to the bottom of this channel. Here it only went about halfway. My sense is if we cannot take this out, we'll at least test this first area, 27.45, 27.50, if it can't hold that, it's probably going to go back to about $27 per ounce short term. This has been Gary Wagner, wishing you as always good trading. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. Bye-bye.